Welcome back to Meet the Candidates. I am here with one of our mayoral candidates for the upcoming 2017 recall election, Mr. Jeffrey Shelley. Um, so I thought we'd get back in and talk a little bit about emergency management law, PA 436. It's been a very big topic. Right. Uh, you know, it was a big topic for some in the city actually before the water crisis, right. but I think there was a lot more attention brought to the law yeah. uh, following. Right. The water crisis. I guess I'll just keep it open ended at the beginning. What, what do you What do you think about emergency management? What are your views on it? Well, I think it's time to to uh, end it mm-hmm. completely. I think uh, you know if if we get a uh, a uh, competent council and a competent mayor, I think things will work out good. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I and bring that up. Uh, you know, I watch. Uh, the council means on Channel 17, if I don't go to them. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> I think it'd be a good idea for the mayor to attend the council meetings. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I came from, I used to live in a small town in Kentucky, Bowling Green, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And the mayor sat right up there with them. And then uh, they'd hash it out, open meeting, back and forth. And instead mm-hmm. of it taking months, it, they could get done in a meeting. Right. Um, well, I think on that, following up on yeah. that, there is a lot of divisiveness among city leaders. There is in right Flint. now. Um, and it also, there, there's a lot of divisiveness between city leadership and, and the broader public, their constituencies. Yes. Um, as mayor, how would you try and, you know, what, what would be your approach to the, those kinds of social dynamics in the city, and how would, how would you try and move things in a new direction? Well, when I go to the the uh, council meetings, it's usually the same people in the audience. Mm-hmm. Every yeah, it's about the same, maybe twenty yeah, folks. Same people. Yeah, and uh, I would, uh, at, you know, if they have an issue, uh, call your councilman. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, you know, just for instance, I know, uh, you know, I I call, I call council people in other wards that than I live in if I see an issue in their ward. Mm. And uh, I, you know, bring it to their attention because if they don't know about it, they're not going to be doing right. thing about it because they're not mind readers. Right. I mean, a lot of people, um, they're not showing up in the first place and they're not commu- right. trying to communicate. Right. And I think that on the other side of that, many, pe- many people, many Flint residents might say they feel like their voices don't matter in yeah. government. Yeah. And another thing is uh, they got it set up. There's rules uh, for the council meeting that uh, people can speak for three minutes mm-hmm. and they can't respond. I think they need to change the rules for the council meeting so they can respond right after the people talk. They can respond after everybody gets done talking for five minutes. Yeah, the way it works now, you can yeah. spend about an hour listening to comments. Yeah. And, and then you get one set of comments at the end on right. all, you right. know, an hour of... I think it, it'd be better to interact with the citizens of Flint at that time. That, that's what the meeting should be for. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I thought maybe we could talk also a little bit about transparency in government, uh, what, what efforts would you take as an elected leader to ensure transparency? And are you frustrated with the level of transparency currently? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, and it's it's the mayor's office and uh, the council meetings. Uh, they have, when they had an emergency meeting today, I seen posted after the meeting was taking place. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I couldn't go to it. Yeah. So I think, it, you know, if they have a meeting, and they're supposed to be open meetings because it's in the charter, uh, that... Uh, it's like meetings are public, but but it's like a, yeah, some sort of secret system right, sometimes right. to figure out right. a meeting yeah. that you could have been at. And, and then yeah. uh, sometimes, uh, you know, two people is not a meeting. Three people or more is a meeting. Mm-hmm. That's that's definition of a meeting. Mm-hmm. And sometimes uh, they have... And it's illegal to have three or more people in a meeting because we have the open meeting uh, in our charter. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think uh, they do need more transparency. And uh, the next thing is uh, they have these sub meetings before the regular council meeting, mm-hmm. and they run over an hour. So you got people out there waiting to 
start the, uh, the regular start their meeting, meeting for forty five yeah. minutes to an hour. Yeah, and may they need to move their meetings and and post them a day early or so, mm -hmm. so they can start on time. Because uh, the last council meeting I went to is it had been ninety five degrees up there, mm -hmm. and people were hot. Yeah, and the chairs aren't very comfortable. Either. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> it, you know, and uh, they want to speak and give them the opportunity to speak and answer them mm -hmm. right afterwards. Right. Um, you brought up the charter. W were you happy with the new yes. charter? Do you feel good about it? It's time for a new charter. And what what did you like? Well, I like that we're getting the ombudsman back. Uh huh. Right. And, you know, uh, because uh, I know uh, I talked to Nita Brown, who worked in the ombudsman office uh, before. Mm -hmm. for uh, 20 years, and uh, I just think it's a good program, and I think it'll help get, uh, you know, pe the citizens to vent to somebody to get to the mayor. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a question here, going back to crime and public mm -hmm. safety. Um, what strategies would you support to decrease crime in Flint? Well, I'd do shock and awe. Really? Yeah, I would, uh, you know, if somebody calls the police, I'd have them there in four or five minutes. Mm -hmm. And then, because uh, I've heard of uh, of uh, criminals taunting their victims, like, uh, oh, what are you going to do, call the police? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, that's what I would do. And sooner or later, they'd say, well, this ain't going to work anymore because they're coming and I'm going to jail. Mm-hmm. All right, I think we have time for maybe one okay. or two more questions. Um, would you support an expanded public access system? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And uh, would you want it to be city run or, w or would you want an outside management company? I think an outside management company, a non partisan. Right, okay. Uh, outside management, because uh, you don't want political, you want, you know, a non partisan. Right. Right. So you get both sides. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And um, we're about out of questions. Uh, one, one last question. We, we talked a bit earlier about water quality. You didn't speak quite as much about water affordability. And I know right. one topic among residents is um, the debt that they owe on right. their water bills. Right. Um, I know some people in principle, what, what would you say to residents that say in principle, I don't want to pay some of the debt on my water bill, particularly for the period that included when my water was at its most poisonous? Well, first, first of all, my uh, water bills run 160 to $170. Mm -hmm. so that's water and sewer together. Right. And Among the uh, highest bills in the nation. Yeah. Right. And, uh, we charge the residents 10 times more than what we pay for the water. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, they should go down by 30% right from the get-go. I guess a basic, an even more basic question might be, wh what, do you, what do you attribute the high water rates to, right? I mean, I know when the, the KWA line was being pitched, it was being pitched as a water affordability plan because right. there was concern that Detroit was responsible for the rate hikes, but I know I've heard others say, well, really, yeah. the, the high water bills have to do with this or this. Well, so. another reason they're so high is up to 40% of the water is lost before it gets into the homes. Okay. Right. And that's why I'm thinking we need to replace the main lines, too. Right. Because uh, if you replace them, uh, you sh should be able to say 40%. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, right, that's uh, the number I heard was up to 40% of the water mm -hmm. is lost. Right. And uh, so, uh, and the people who, I don't think they should have to pay the bill to the time that uh, it was in, in uh, EPA. I mean, some standards. would say it's still not up to standard now. I right. know a lot of people are concerned, but it definitely, right. you know, if you go back to right. 2014, 2015. Right. And I think, uh, I th from what I understand, there was a, uh, there's $25 million coming to for the water issue right now, mm -hmm. and I would, uh, I would uh, forgive the water bills. Right, debt forgiveness. Just forgive. Don't right. matter what you make or if you paid or what. Mm -hmm. For that time period, I think you should you have to pay your sewer part of it. Right, but not the water part. And I know one of the difficulties for people that feel that way is you can't yeah. isolate your payments, right? You can't say right. to the water to you know to the water utility company, okay, just this yeah. is I'm just giving you the sewer part. They don't actually delineate the right. payments in that way. Correct. So 
So maybe they should. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then let's talk about the water uh, situation a little more. <laughs> okay. They there there was uh, thirteen positions at the water plant not filled. Right. And that that's an issue. Very similar to what we were talking about with the police department, right? Mm, I yes. Mean, just right. understaffed, understaffed, under resourced. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, we need to to uh, you know get people throughout the country to come here and 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 uh, fill these positions. Right. I don't care if they come from Canada or right or California, you know. Right. But we need qualified individuals, and then. Uh, you know, to staff the water plant, and I know the uh, the wastewater plant, uh, they ran out of chlorine about, oh, a month ago, and, uh, and uh, right. you know, same thing, you know, understaffed. Yeah. Okay, so we have about two minutes left. Okay. So what I want to do to close <laughs> is for you to look straight ahead at that camera in front of you. Don't talk to me, talk to okay. the audience, and just give them your pitch as to why, uh, you know, Post November, you should be mayor of Flint. Yes. Well, uh, the reason I ran for mayor is I think I could do a better job than the mayor's doing right now. And one thing we need is economic development. And we do have the three water sources here, and we need to go out and sell Flint to industry and businesses. We need to bring small businesses back into the neighborhoods like uh, Crona Road and Pearson and Clio Road and Dort Highway. And, uh, and, uh, I think I can do that with my business. Uh, I, I've got friends out in the, uh, outline areas that, uh, have businesses like, uh, batteries plus. And, uh, I think we can convince them that Flint's coming back and they need to be on board with Flint, to to be part of the growth of Flint back. And, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, we can get the water bills down. Uh, like I said, I think it should go down immediately 30%. I think uh, you should be forgiven your water bill for the time period that uh, it wasn't in the EPA regulations and uh, insurance bills too. I think if we get the crime down and I think uh, we can uh, get the uh, police force uh, financed and uh, in that, you know, from day one, that's that's that weighs on me heavy because, mm-hmm. and uh, so, uh, and that's the reason why I think you should vote for me for mayor. All right. Well, thank you very much okay. for being here, Mr. Shelley. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Um, and that is it for today for Meet the Candidates. Uh, but stay tuned because we will be back with more interviews with candidates for both the mayoral and city council races for the upcoming November election. Thanks. Thank you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He does the work of two jobs, but only gets paid for one. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. Cuando estaba en crianza temporal, nunca sabía cuándo me iba a tener que mudar, así que siempre tenía mi maleta lista. Y un día, me adoptaron. Mis nuevos padres me abrieron sus corazones y su hogar. Ellos me cocinan mi desayuno favorito todas las mañanas. Mis padres me llevan a viajes que jamás pensé podría ir. Me dieron un hogar y una mejor excusa para usar esa maleta. Mis padres no son perfectos, pero son perfectos para mí. Todos tenemos un sueño. El mío era ver el océano. Y con un poco de ayuda, lo logré.
There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans. Because love has no labels. Good evening, and welcome to Meet the Candidates. I am your host for today, Curtis Pamilia, and my guest is a Mr. Jeffrey Shelley, who is one of our 17 candidates for the upcoming 2017 recall election for mayor of Flint. Mr. Shelley, thank you for being here with us today. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, sure. Um, So I thought we'd begin by you just telling us a little bit about yourself and why you decided to run for mayor. Well, I uh, grew up in the Flint area. I... I, uh, my grandparents lived here. My great pa- grandparents lived here, and uh, I've I moved out in uh, uh, in uh, 1980 with General Motors when the jobs were leaving Flint, so I could provide for my family. Move out to the county? Or? No, I had to move out of state. Oh, okay. And uh, I, c- my family still lived here, and I, you I know, see. kept in touch with them for, and I seen uh, Flint over the years deteriorating right uh, because of the lack of jobs and the GM pull out and uh, I retired uh, in 08 I went up to uh, what we bought lake house uh, on Sanford Lake and then I decided it's time to come home mm-hmm. so I moved back home I live in the city of Flint and it, when was that that you moved back we moved back this January okay and uh, I love my hometown I love the people of it and that's why we moved back. And um, so what are your qualifications to be mayor? Well, I, uh, like I said, I worked for GM for 31 years. Mm-hmm. And during that time period, uh, General Morris paid for my education. So I took advantage of that program, and I, uh, I uh, studied in uh, uh, business management and business administration. Mm-hmm. I've owned, uh, oh, I would say, eight or nine businesses in the meantime, and uh, I specialize in eight or nine businesses. Yes. What what kind of businesses? Uh, one's a land sale business. We buy and sell land all across the country okay. and Canada. And uh, I've had car lots. I've had, uh, you know, so we've had a we've had a few businesses. Okay. And one business I had, uh, I bought uh, and rehabbed uh, homes here in Flint, Michigan, and sold my land contract. I financed them. Because I think home ownership's a key to make a stable neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So, and that worked real well. I, you know, uh, they paid on time. I made a little bit of money, and they're home. They're more homeowners because of this program I had in Flint. Great. Uh, what would you say are the top five issues that uh, you would want to focus on as mayor? The first one, and you know, and not necessarily first. For everybody, but for me, it's safety and crime. Okay. That's number one on my list. Number one. Uh, number two is the water issue we have. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's still ongoing. It's it's going slow. Uh, three is uh, blight. Uh, four would be uh, economic development. Okay. And, uh, and uh, uh, five would be... Uh, Jeez. Uh, f- the fifth one would be, uh, jeez, I told you to put four. <laughs> Poverty. Poverty. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, let's start with number one at the okay. top of your list, public safety. Um, yes. What changes would you like to make? What proposals would you like to put forward? Uh, what do you think is holding the city back right now? I, I saw, um, I think it just came out today, the FBI's top ten most violent cities um, Flint was back yeah. on the list at number nine. Yeah, uh, you know, not a list. Obviously, you want to be on. So, <laughs> the first problem with the safety is funding for the police department. Definitely, and mm-hmm. uh, we need to get to with federal, state, and uh, local uh, agencies to get the police funded. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need uh, a slew more police officers 
get their response time down. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they need equipment. And another thing I've, I've, I've talked to the police about this is I think in the next contract uh, to retain the police officers, if you get trained in the city of Flint, you have to stay three years or you have to pay your training fee back, which is about $6,500. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and in the interim, I think we need to have the state police come in and, and help out mm-hmm. because... Uh, I, they're doing everything they can do out there. There's just not enough of them. Not enough of them. I mean, so let let's talk about. Um, there's obviously what a half century history of um, financial decline among the right. public sector. Right. Uh, I guess how do you think about? I think it was number four on your list was economic development. Right. So, um, I mean, there's a lot of different ideas right. of how to bring money back into the public right. system and strengthen it. I mean, what what's your philosophy on that? How would you? Well, go about the first it? thing, if you pass a millage for the police, it needs to go to the police. Okay. As secondly, <laughs> we do need to bring more businesses in. Right. Uh, you know, to build a tax base, and uh, third. Uh, you know, and uh, like I said, we need to pass a bill through legislation, a uh, legislation, mm-hmm. to uh, to uh, you know uh, fund our police force. Right. Um, I want to talk a little bit. I think it was number two on your list was the water. Yes. Uh, we are in the middle of a public health yes. emergency. Um, and also we're in the middle of an affordability crisis that obviously predates the right. water quality crisis. Right. Um, I guess, w- where do you think the city's at in terms of its recovery? What do you think the gaps are and what's currently happening? And, uh, how would you try and bring the residents of Flint clean, affordable water, drinking water? Well, and this has to do with economic development too. Mm-hmm. We have three sources of water here. One is uh, a KWA pipeline, mm-hmm. which we own 33% of. And the second's the Detroit, you know, come through Detroit. Clean and water, third's right. uh, the uh, uh, Flint, Flint River, River. Mm-hmm. which, uh, you know, I think you use the Flint water for potable water mm-hmm. and, and sell the water to uh, factories and things, not life-sustaining water. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we have two other uh, sources of water, but uh, getting back to getting them, I think the service lines are going too slow. Mm -hmm. I think we need to get more contractors in here and get them done, and we need to also uh, uh, replace the main lines. Mm -hmm. And uh, then uh, we need to update and upgrade our uh, water facility plant. But, I mean, similar to the police department, I mean, yeah. I'm sure to a certain degree it comes down to, again, the city's lack of funds. Right. Um, do you think the, the state should be stepping in to finance more of the recovery? Do you think they should have uh, yeah. more of a hand in what's going on in the city than they currently do? Well, Mayor Weaver says we have $600 million that came into the city for the water mm-hmm. crisis. And that should be enough to replace the lines. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Upgrade. It's all water related. Upgrade the water plant and put the main lines in. Mm-hmm. So I think the financing for the water is in place already. We just have to use it efficiently so we can get through this. Right. And I know. Um, I believe Mayor Weaver's water sourcing proposal that she yeah. came out with a, a couple months ago didn't involve updating the water treatment plant, right. but it was a 30-year plan through Gliwa. Um, yeah. when, when you got the new, I know when I heard the news about yeah. that, I was kind of shocked because up right. until that proposal came out, right. it just seemed like everything was going to be going right. with the KWA. Right. Um, what, what was your reaction when you heard about that plan? What, how do you feel about it? Well, I know we have uh, did it for since 67, I'm thinking, I uh, bought mm-hmm. water from Detroit until you know, the KWA came right. into play. And it, it uh, I, I, do, I don't think we should, I don't think we should go into a 30 year contract with them. I think we should, uh, I, I still think we should go with KWA for the fact that uh, we own 30, well, we're paying a bond on uh, 33% of the pipeline. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, the extra water we should, we should be able to sell to out, you know, out, outline the, areas in industry. The bond for the, for the, Karagandi portion, you mean, or for the um, for the KWA. for the Detroit line? Yeah, for KWA. Yeah. yeah, 
And uh, I think uh, if we are not a buyer and we're a seller of water, it'd lower the water rates. Mm -hmm. And the next thing is the health issue involved with uh, the water. Besides the lead, there was also bacteria in the water, mm -hmm. which causes cancer. And Right. So, I mean, are you concerned? I know there's a push now to try and transition the city off of the pods, off of the water bottles, and to home filters. Are you concerned about that from yeah. a kind of health perspective? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, the all the service lines aren't changed yet. Right. And we got people that are homebound, right. that uh, that can that rely on this water, right. and a lot of people have P a PTSD of water <laughs> right. in the city. Yeah, absolutely. I've heard a lot of people yep. say they'll uh, never drink it they'll again. They'll never drink from any, not even just in Flint. Right. That they'll never drink from any right. water system again. Right. Um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of mental, like you were saying, PTSD. A lot of right. mental health. Um, problems surrounding the city right um i guess how, how would you approach that as mayor because i think that's a really kind of sensitive subtext to a lot of what, what well, the city's going through right and like now. i said i've got neighbors i've got one neighbor that uh owns a uh, adult foster care home mm -hmm. in flint mm -hmm. and uh she's even uh she showed me that she don't even trust the bottled water now she thinks it's cracked capped you know cracked open already I mean, you know, and, uh, you know, the lines in the house that may have sludge in it. And and uh, and uh, I think, uh, you know, I know the wires uh, tested uh, up to EPA standards lately. I think it's still too early because, uh, you know, when you change the pipes out, you mix stuff up. Right. Yeah. And in fact, uh, I think that's part of the reason that they're still saying people should be using right. the home filters right. is because lead service line right. Right. replacements actually right. increase, over the short term, increase lead in water. So I think they should keep the pods at least six months after they it tests clear at least three times. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then another thing, uh, with the home filters, the hot water is not filtered. So I would suggest everybody have your hot water heater serviced, have it flushed out at least once a year. Okay. You know, to get the slime and sludge out of that. Right, right. Um, one more que uh, question really quickly before we go yes. to break. Um, what do you think about proposals to turn Flint into a dry city so that alcohol was only served in bars and restaurants, cut down on some of the party stores, you know? Well, I used to live in Kentucky, and I lived in a dry county. Mm -hmm. And it don't work because they're <laughs> going to go to the next county over and buy it anyway. Right. So all that's going to do is... Uh, Lose revenue, right? So uh, it don't work, right? Okay. Uh, well, let's take a short break, okay. and we'll continue with some new topics uh, after that. Uh, stay tuned. I am here chatting with uh, Mr. Jeffrey Shelley. Thank you.